let's look at how to navigate once you're in Seesaw. So once you've created an account and set up a few classes, if you go over to your name in the upper left hand corner, it'll give you your status and how many classes you've created. Again, you can use this plus button to create new classes. Uh, if you go to the gear icon, this allows you to do a few things with your account. One thing I do recommend doing, if you use your Google sign in, it'll have your first and last name. Students are more familiar probably with Mr. or Miss for your name. So I change my display name to Mrs. McDonald. You can add an icon, either an image or a photo of you to represent you for every post that you make. So those are some options with the account settings. If you go to the upper right corner, you'll find a wrench. Now that is new with Seesaw updates. So if you are an experienced Seesaw user, welcome to Seesaw, I believe it's 5.0, the newest update. Uh, it's tried to make managing classes a little bit easier by putting this wrench in the upper right hand corner. So I'm going to choose this wrench and I'm in my second grade class right now. I could change the name of the class if I want to call them, you know, the super second graders, you know, whatever I wanted to call my class. Uh, if I wanted to change the grade level. Manage teachers allows me to invite other teachers. So if you're in a co-teaching situation, you would enter uh, the teacher's email so that they could then join and be a co-teacher for your class. Now class theme, this is really helpful if you are secondary and you have multiple periods. And plus, if students are using Seesaw in multiple classes, it helps if they have a color and a theme that goes with each class. So let me make second grade this lovely rose color. Then the icon is the default is just the letters of the name of the class, second grade, SG. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose this cute apple as my icon. What you'll notice is they have some preset icons or you could upload your own image. So if you wanted to upload a, a beaker or um, a history textbook or I, uh, sorry history folks that wasn't very exciting or um, you know William Shakespeare whatever you wanted to be your class icon you could do so. So I'll choose that Apple. I can change my student sign-in mode. Again I have the um, class code using the QR code for my younger students. Manage students allows me to add students or delete students. I can also go up to the student name and change their icon. So if Abby really wanted to be the panda, I could put the panda or I could use a photo if I wanted to put a photo with Abby's name. So that lets me manage students. Then I can uh, manage the ability of students to like and comment on each other's work. Without a doubt, I would be sure you have turned on new comments require approval. Just so that before a student uh, is able to post a comment, you can read it and make sure it's appropriate and displays good digital citizenship. The default is that students can see each other's work. I turn this on and off as I need to. If I'm doing something where I don't want them to see each other's projects until everybody's done, um, I'll turn that off and confirm the change. Um, students would then have to log back in just to activate that change. Um, so then I would have it turned off for maybe a week as they're creating and uploading projects and then turn it back on again when I wanted them to view and comment on each other's work. I would always be sure you have the teacher power to approve things before they get posted. And I turn on enable item editing because this allows students to edit things that you post or things that they have posted. They don't edit each other's posts. It would be something that you have posted for them or that they have posted. They can go back and change it if they need to. Um, enabling family access. This would enable uh, you to invite parents to access their child's portfolio. They would only get access to their child's portfolio. You can send out paper invites or customize an email that goes out to them on how to do that. So that would be enabling family access, um, inviting families, managing families once they're logged in. And I don't have any connected families right now. And um, then you can also change whether you want 
family members to be able to um, like and comment on the student work. Again, it depends on, on what your goals are here. You know, it could be something that you, you try. I would, without a doubt, have the approval first. You know, I, I don't think parents would say something inappropriate about their child's work, but you never know. So it's always a good idea that you get a notification, you know, when a, when a parent comments on the child's work and that you just read it through before it then becomes part of the child's portfolio. So then looking further down, we have the option of enabling a class blog and that will be covered in a later video. I wanted to show you a very important option which is manage folders. I found that I love Seesaw and I use it every single day which means that there are hundreds of things that are becoming parts of my students' portfolios. I really recommend thinking in advance of how you want to set up folders. So it could be based upon unit work. You could say, you know, unit one, um, we're looking at, um, let's say, fossils. I'm just making something up. Um, then creating folders. You could even say this is the science folder. And then maybe this is my um, reading folder. Take the time to create folders in advance so that work can get sorted into those folders. Now, depending on your learners, um, you can have it where only you sort things into folders. Um, I prefer having students and teachers be able to sort things into folders. So with this prompt, when a student adds something to their portfolio, they'll be asked what folder to put it in. And again, as you add more and more things to Seesaw, it is really helpful to have those folders set up in advance.